the closest open source solution that you can get to AGI is right now here in the form of a Chinese model. Surprisingly or unsurprisingly, this model is from China. A company called DeepSeek has released its model called R1, which is a thinking or reasoning model that goes into a process of test time inference or compute scaling. And this model has come with MIT license. That means it's completely open for you to do anything with the model. So in fact, the company has gone one step ahead and then said, if you happen to train any model with this like output, you are allowed to do that, which is something that a lot of companies do not do. For example, OpenAI's terms of service, TOS, doesn't let you train another model using their output even though some companies do that, that is technically legally not allowed by OpenAI. So DeepSeek R1 is just right now here and it is one of the best thinking models that you can figure out. I put DeepSeek through a bunch of weird tests and then I'm honestly surprised and also really, really happy that this model seemed to exist. And another thing that the company did is they also created a bunch of child models or you can call it a distilled model. So in this video, I'm going to break down every single thing that I know about DeepSeek. And we are also going to see some live demo about the things that I asked DeepSeek and how the model is doing. To start with, this is a thinking model, a reasoning model in the family of OpenAI O1, OpenAI O3 and a bunch of other models. Now DeepSeek R1, according to the benchmarks has got performance on par with OpenAI O1. And this is a fully open source model. The model is available for you to download. The model is available for you to do anything with that. You can also create new distal models, but they have also created distal models and then released it available. And if you want to try out DeepSeek with R1, you can directly go to chat.deepseek.com and then try out. What is the best thing about this model? The best thing about this model here is that the distal version of DeepSeek not the original DeepSeek. So there are two original big size models, DeepSeek R1, DeepSeek Zero. DeepSeek Zero is the model that they trained for the first time, a reasoning model that is trained through reinforcement learning. But they figured out that the DeepSeek R1 Zero has got some kind of a problem. Like for example, it can be into multiple repetitions or one of the biggest problem with reasoning model is it goes into the loop, unending loop. So the same problem existed with DeepSeek Zero. So DeepSeek R10, they kept it aside and then created another model or you should say optimize that model and then created something called DeepSeek R1. Now, if you see the benchmarks, the models that are distilled from DeepSeek R1, it itself is performing really better on a lot of different benchmarks. Take a look at this. So if you see DeepSeek R1, distilled version of Quen 7 billion parameter model, it has scored 55.5 on AIME 2024 pass one, just like one pass, like not multiple pass, just one pass. This model is already beating Claude 3.5 Sonnet 10 2022. So this is, this is a claim that we have to verify in the long run. This video is not about the distilled models, but it is quite impressive to see that they are proving that, okay, probably you can take some model like, you know, Quen 1.5, Quen 7 billion parameter model use DeepSeek R1 as the teacher model or uh, use that to distill this model and then create a smaller version of the model. And that model is going to be outright better than a lot of these proprietary models. Is this the end of proprietary models? I don't think so, but this is going to be an excellent test for a lot of people to train new models and create. Almost at a time when people have almost forgot to do fine tuning, I hardly see people doing fine tuning because these proprietary models are really good for a lot of enterprise use cases. So at this time, there is this new push, new nudge to go into the fine tuning direction. I'm really happy about it. And uh, the licenses um, are one and uh, there are uh, like some really good things on their paper. If you have to go check, I'm not sure how much time I will have to go deeper into the paper. But if there is one thing that you have to pay attention to, it is the way they train the model. The model is really good with math coding, the tasks that require really long thinking. But enough of the theory part, I'm going to take you to the actual coding part and I'm going to show you what this model is capable of. I'm going to go through a couple of questions and then see how the model is doing and what is that particularly that impressed me. First of all, a very simple question. I went ahead and asked, okay, US TikTok ban and uh, US has you know, banned TikTok. What's your thought? So it thought for seven seconds and you can see like when you see the thought process of deep seek, it's almost like you know, you've got a multiple personality and then both the characters inside your mind are talking to each other. 
Not sure how many of you have watched the movie called Inside Out by Pixar uh, or Disney. I don't know if it is by Pixar or Disney. But if you have watched the movie, you would understand that, you know, there are like multiple different characteristics or characters inside your mind and then they're talking to each other. This is a very similar attempt. So you can see, okay, the user is asking about my thoughts on US banning TikTok. Oh, first I need to make sure I understand the context. And then it gives you the context. It It's like the self-reflective thoughts. It just goes back and forth. And this is possible because of something called a chain of thought. So this is a chain of thought that is scaled up happening at the inference time. But the model also has been trained for this to be possible during the inference time. So this is deep seek R1 which is a reinforcement learning trained model, uh, based trained model, and the model is doing this. I honestly like liked it. Uh, so it's, it's kind of good, like it goes through all the things, it gives you both the perspective. I should start outlining the key point from both the side, one from US, which is like kind of worried about TikTok ban, and it goes. This model is not for this kind of question, I just wanted to like start with something like this, and then understand how the model is doing. But now, one of the primary use cases where OpenAI highlighted that this kind of model, the O1 kind of model is good, is tasks like this. For example, OpenAI gave something like this. This is, let's say, an encrypted text. And then you have a decrypted text. So you don't have a key. So this is the classical encryption and decryption. But instead of having a key in the middle, or instead of you sharing the key with the end user, the user, the hacker or man in the middle or whoever it is, the malicious actor or the good actor, whoever it is, they've got both the encrypted text and they've got the de decrypted text. Now, all they have to do is, if I give you new text, can they decrypt it? This is honestly like at the start of like, if you have a, a read history, one of the things that people were trying to do, I think during the World War II, if I'm not wrong, um, Alan Turing and a bunch of others, they were trying to basically do this thing. They're trying to listen to their enemies and then see if they can create the key that will actually decrypt for them. And O1 was, this is an example part of O1. And here, DeepSeek is thinking for 76 seconds. And look at the thought process. Okay, let's try to figure out how to decode the given cipher. First of all, we didn't say anything about cipher, but we just said decode. So maybe it decoded, it's a cipher. The first example was this, which translates to think step by step. Mm. So I need to see what kind of cipher is being used here. First, let's compare this, wait, Step by step is three words. Here you have one, two, three, four, one, two, three. But the cipher has four words. Oh, I don't know why, why does it think that it has four words? And then it again goes back and then it says, okay, plain text. It's comparing this and this, this and this, this and this, this and this. Wait, the fourth word in the cipher text is this, which decodes to step. Okay, now the actual text is not matching. It is going through the process and finally, 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 after everything, it says there are three R's in strawberry, which is exactly the answer that OpenAI had already told us that it is giving. Very impressive. Uh, then again, like I've got another question, which is like, I thought, okay, maybe I should start teasing DeepSeek. And uh, I said, okay, why? <laughs> Something political. I know for sure that DeepSeek is not going to answer this. I, d I don't think the company would want to get into trouble. Like if you are living in a country, where legally something is not allowed for you to do. I understand. I'm not trying to highlight the censorship, but if you happen to use DeepSeek model, you need to know that this is going to be a case. So next, I wanted to ask the question in a different way, write a probability equation where Taiwan is free from China. Doesn't do it. Well and good. So next, I took a question from uh, one of the popular Indian entrance exams, which is called IIT. And uh, I gave a question. Uh, it's, it's a question of uh, integrals. And... OpenAI GPT-4, I gave this to GPT-4O, it did not solve this. And in this particular case, DeepSeek exactly solved the right answer. So you can see that first of all, even though what I've, I've given, it's not in it like very legible format for a human being. DeepSeek first converted into a format that is easy for you to understand. And then it started solving one by one, step by step, step by step, step by step. And after solving it, in this case, it took 29 seconds. It finally said, okay, 22 by seven minus pi is the answer, which is exactly the right answer. In fact, it did latex rendering for me and then it is giving me the final answer, which is the best answer. So it seems like it is a really good model with math. So I thought, okay, let me go ahead and then try to trick um, DeepSeek. So what I tried to do is, I first gave a problem. I said a regular prism has a total surface of 94 square units, a volume of 60 cubic units, um, length, width, height, and this is like a modified problem. 
and I told it to solve. So you can see that it saw it thought for 56 seconds and it has the formula for volume. Volume is equal to length into width into height. It tried to calculate surface. It is doing all these things. I'm not sure if there is any calculator behind this model, but if this is only a large language model at an inference speed, it is pretty impressive without writing a Python code, without using a calculator, honestly, super impressive, but we don't know what exactly is, but it is solving everything and then it is giving me the right answer. So it is giving me the answer, which is three, four, five in a non decreasing order. But if you consider it to be a decreasing order, you can say like five, four, three, three, five, four, you, ha you have like multiple permutation combination of this, but the triplet is three numbers, three, four, five. Okay. Now what I tried to do with deep seek is I thought maybe if they've got a feedback loop, maybe if you know, it's going to be part of their training data, I don't know what is that they are doing. What if I modify the question in such a way that the question will not have any answer. So like it's a trick question to be really, really honest. It's a trick question. So I gave the same thing, but for this mathematically, there is no answer. In fact, you can take this question, ask um, GPT-4 or somebody to write a Python code, execute the Python code. At the end of the day, you will not get any answer at all. And what DeepSeek did is it thought for 87 seconds and it is trying to do everything. And at some point it, uh, it kind of says, okay, but the problem says find all possible sets implying that there is at least one. So it figured out that, okay, there are no triplets with integer dimensions where surface area is 150 and the volume is 100. So it's kind of like going through this um, confusion. Okay. The, the, the master who gave me the question, I'm considering my, myself to be master. The master who gave me the question said, you have to find all possible set, but I did not arrive at an answer. Maybe I did something wrong, which is quite amazing. I, 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 yeah, I would definitely love to dive deeper into the paper, but for now, you know, just look at it. It's quite funny. Oh, maybe the factors don't have to be in the order. So it's trying to come up with the different ways to make sure that I, as a human who gave the problem, did not get, made a mistake, but rather it made a mistake. So it's saying, okay, the, so the answer must have integer dimension, but according to my calculation, there is no such triple. Therefore, either I made a mistake or the problem is tricky. I mean, it's super interesting to see that it can like, you're literally talking about a large language model, but I don't know means I'm not sure I don't I'm not going to say anything related to AGA. But if there is any glimpse of AGA, I think this is like the closest in the open source world that I've ever seen in my life. So it says, Oh, the problem could be tricky. And then it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Uh, maybe I missed it just still thinks that it has missed. And finally, at the end, it says, Okay, it has done everything thing possible. None of these surfaces equal to 150. We also verified all the other solution, um, rational root theorem, all the mathematical things. There are no integer solutions. The final answer is no solution. The number of times a large language model has come back to me and then told me no solution before this probably zero unless until you wrote a Python code or something. So it is super impressive that it managed to give me an answer where the answer is just no solution. And even it's not like pause part of, it's not an MCQ question. It's not a multiple choice question where no solution is part of the option. I've literally asked it a question. In fact, the previous question was with the options, which arrived at a solution, but here it gave me no solution. I was super impressed with this. Then I thought, okay, let me push it one step further before I close my test and make the video. So what I did is I gave a mathematic, uh, I gave a chemical equation, a uh, problem. A bottle which contains 200 ml of 0.1 m KOH absorbs 1 millimole of CO from air. Uh, if the solution is then treated, what is the answer? So the right answer to this question is 0 0.095 N. But the trick in this question is it's not carbon monoxide, it is carbon dioxide. The right question is CO2, not CO. So instead of giving carbon dioxide, I just give carbon monoxide. I mean, it might look like a simple mistake, but it would change a lot of things. So again, a tricky question, but instead of giving a no solution, I wanted it to actually see, I wanted to see what it is capable of doing. So it is trying to understand the problem. Okay. Let me try to figure out this chemistry problem. So we have a bottle of 200 ml of 0.1 M KOH solution. And then it goes on understanding the problem. We need to find the resulting normality. So even though I've not, um, 
you know exactly like given all the things that it has to do it kind of like arrived at a solution okay the normality will be okay so it is trying to find the normality and then it is trying to recall the basics okay fine let me first let me recall some basics koh is a strong base so in a solution it disassociates completely into k plus and oh minus ions and then it gives and then suddenly it's like it's it it got a thought i mean thought is a um variable here uh, what wait co 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 is a carbon monoxide is there a reaction between koh and co mm, i'm a bit unsure here maybe co reacts with hydroxide ions because you can see like we are creating like k plus and oh minus maybe co reacts with hydroxide ions um alternatively maybe it's a typo they meant co2 but instead of co because CO2 is a common acidic oxide that reacts with bases like KOH. Let me check the problem again. Okay, it says CO. Okay, it it is trying to once again validate whether the question is wrong. It says CO, so the carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide is a neutral oxide, right? Oh, it doesn't react with strong bases like KOH and a normal concern. Oh, maybe the problem actually meant CO2. Then it goes back to see if it is CO or CO2. Or maybe if I have made a mistake. Okay, it says, okay, maybe... Um, it's a CO2 and uh, I've just like written it as CO like maybe the human who gave me the problem is complete dumb so it just like goes on and then okay since the problem says one millimole of CO perhaps even if it is CO maybe they considered some reaction so it's trying to now see what are the possibilities of CO carbon monoxide um, participating in this reaction wait CO can act as a Lewis acid acid accepting a pair pair of electrons but in an aqueous solution, mm, maybe not. Like it's it's almost it almost feels like you know two chemical scientists. Like I'm not like a very good chemistry nerd. I just watch Nile Red and Nile Blue. This, that's my maximum chemistry knowledge in 2024 and 2025. But it is so funny and so interesting and intriguing to see like having this conversation within itself. And then finally, it kind of decides. Okay, wait. The guy who gave me the problem is dumb. I mean, it doesn't say that. So the guy who gave me the problem is dumb. So, and it tries to have a, assuming a typo from CO to CO2, and then it gives me the final answer. For normality, it is 0.095N, which is exactly the right answer. If the question is carbon dioxide instead of carbon monoxide. I think at this point, I should stop the video because this is, I'm going to play with this model a lot. This is definitely a model that is a reasoning model that is, mightily have impressed me and uh, there are a lot of different reasons like i shared why it is impressive let alone the fact that this is open source i mean a company that is not at the size of open ai has released a model has released a bunch of child or distilled models has put it on production and it is at an extreme speed but the speed at which they have deployed it in production because i've always believed that open ai has got one of the best infras you can see anthropic always being down whenever you are using anthropic so this is super mightily impressive. Let me know what you think about this model. I mean, if you do not like a Chinese model, I would strongly encourage you just keep that uh, thought outside for a minute. Maybe create a temporary email ID, sign up for DeepSeek and then try out the model. Let me know what you think about this model. I'm super impressed and uh, I understand that creating something like O1 from scratch for the very first time, a novel thought is always difficult than creating something like DeepSeek R1. But still, I would say that you need to have courage to create a model like this. Say that it is on par with the one of the best models on the planet, created by one of the best research teams on the planet. And without, you know, humongous budget and then massive PR, like what OpenAI and Anthropic has got. So I'm super impressed. DeepSeek, uh, I've got a real good attention to this model. I'm going to test this model. If you have got any interesting question, if this model doesn't do well, let me know in the comment section. Otherwise, see you in another video. Happy prompting.